Our vacation begins with maintenance assessments, projects mount up, we attend an expat gathering, and we celebrate our return with a couple of ice cold San Miguel's. It's been almost a week since returning to our home in Samar. Once again, the old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same, has been completely validated. First, we have had seven brownouts, two low water pressure days, and one half day of no water due to a scheduled outage. The one positive thing is that six of the brownouts lasted less than 15 minutes, and the one this day lasted at least a couple hours. For most of my viewers that live in the Philippines, especially those living in the province, you know this routine all too well. My brother-in-law and I were standing over the generator contemplating firing the thing up when the power returned this afternoon. It's not so much that we can't handle the heat, we just got done shopping. But we just loaded up the ref and freezer with uh, food yesterday. Nonetheless, brownouts are always a pain in the ass inconvenience especially when you are involved in something that requires power. If there's one thing living in the Philippines teaches you, it's not to take anything for granted. Now, if there were ever to be an LPG shortage, we would really be in a hurt locker because then we couldn't cook. At that point, we would simply be camping. Back in the village where we live, there are some new faces to be seen and still some familiar ones who are just a little bit older and I've come across a few new electric trikes that are in use. The roads remain the worst for wear and the roosters continue to crow all hours of the day. One notable thing is that the number of Sari Sari stores has actually increased. There are at least six of them within shouting distance of my front door now. <laughs> Our home has been fairly well kept, except for on the preventive maintenance side of things, and that is a rather common occurrence here in the Philippines. Build to look nice, then address the failing issues years later when they occur, if there's money available. Our home is going on about 10 years old now, and things are starting to look a little worn, and some things are failing. One of the water heaters has quit working, a couple of electrical outlets have gone bad, and the kitchen water sink faucet popped off its base on me yesterday, presenting me with a little geyser of a problem. Exterior-wise, it might be time for some painting. If you are someone who has not spent much time in the tropics, one thing worth mentioning here is that in this heat and humidity, if anything is not maintained, it will likely fail before its time. This goes without saying, especially when the climate indoors is not controlled. When we are here, we generally keep our home fully air-conditioned and dry, and everything in the home keeps well that way. It was easy to tell that our caretakers do not quite understand this concept, and it's obvious they cut back on the aircon somewhat in order to save on the electric bill. A telltale sign of heat and humidity side effects are when white plastics inside the home become discolored and turn a dirty yellow. With most all plastics in the house turning dirty yellow, I knew there was not enough air conditioning going on. Yesterday we had a chance to make the weekly expat gathering at a local eatery in Calbayag City. There we reminisced with some old friends we got to meet quite a few newcomers. We grabbed a bite to eat, downed a few beers, but still got home in time for a late nap. The first few days here has been spent making maintenance assessments on the house, picking up some needed items, and shopping for essentials. I got my work cut out for me on my so-called vacation. Okay, ready? No. I did manage to get the drone up, but I had some difficulty with software permissions as we are close to the Calbayag Airport, which is considered a restricted area for unmanned aerial vehicles. Most airports are. I really feel it's getting harder and harder to find places to fly drones, as with every drone software update, 
comes updated geofencing. If you are inside those areas, it becomes very difficult to obtain takeoff permission, meaning the software simply locks things up on you. I will leave you here to enjoy the rest of this video from the skies above our barangay in the vicinity of Calbayog City on the island of Samar in the Philippines. First San Miguel in a long time. Pilsen. Cheers, honey. Cheers. Welcome home. Welcome home. Now here's something I uh, find quite interesting. If you've never heard of the bamboo telegraph before, this is how it works. People just know. Now, supposedly nobody in the Bronx I know we were showing up on the 8th of December. Uh, we got here just about 12.30 local time. And within minutes, we had a letter that's already been signed and dated and written out on the 8th of December. It's a, uh, it's a request for assistance in the form of cash, rice, goods, other materials needed for a forthcoming activity, which is the Brongai Christmas Party. Now, this is very common to get these in the Brongai when you live in the Brongai uh, for every special event. But the fact that we got this within seconds of our arrival, Tells you the bamboo telegraph is alive and well.